Good morning, Masiraf. Good morning, Good morning, Masiraf. Good morning, my brother. Army staff uh, is asking agitators all over Nigeria to drop down their weapons and embrace peace. Uh, the, the cause of this agitation has not been addressed. Let's get a reaction. Uh, the cause of the ag 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 agitation has not been addressed, which is why all aggrieved angles or sites are welding AK-47, AK-59, and so on and so forth. If you want to at least cure a disease, if you want to bring a patient to hospital to give him remedy to his, you know, his problem, medical problem, what do you do? You go to lab. After going to lab, they will at least name the cause of the sickness. And after naming the cause of sickness, what happened? After diagnosis, what happened? Prescription. After prescription, what? Healing. So you cannot just see somebody that is agitating and, uh, and tell him to stop. No, you are looking for Wahala. Chief of Army Staff is looking for Wahala. Yoruba Nation is agitating and agitating and agitating. Nande is a, was agitating for Biafra before. He was arrested. Not arrested, I kidnapped. Nigeria kidnapped Nande from Nairobi to Nigeria here. And the, he has been in, in confinement for about six months now. So why must we, the agitators, I mean the Ibos, drop the gun? What of the bloody it... heads No, the I'm coming. No, one thing get to, no, let us take it gradually. Because I, I, I don't see the reason why Ibos should drop their guns. By the way, who are welding or carrying guns in Ibo land? When we were agitating for Biafra after the war, we did not use machets. Either we use uh, uh, our tongue, our voice our body language. We've not been using clubs. Nobody used AK-47. But what translated into using AK-47 was that Nandi Kano was agitating peacefully for emancipation of Biafra sovereignty. All of a sudden, the then military junta, former military junta from 1985, 84 to 1985, Buhari, Mohamed Buhari, Commander the military, you know, commanded military operation, tag Operation Panton Dance in Igbo land. They staged it. They went to Nandi Kanu's compound. They secreted that palace, palace of his father, His Royal Highness Igbo, as the Israel Kanu. They killed hundreds of Igbo youths on that compound. Is that how to make peace? No. When they were doing this, they thought that the Biafran boys. We sit back and watch. They will be shooting at them. They will be looking like Mugu Abi. When they used gun arms on the Biafrans, kill the whole youths, it was obvious that Nigeria were busy then. We did not even know it in time. Asking for Igbo man for another pogrom. Another pogrom that has now escalated into full gun running in the southeastern Nigeria. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is that the Ibos, the Biafra status, they were not using even stick, clubs, broken bottles. They were forced to by a Nigerian military clique. But presently, of course, you can see nobody is welding gun in Ibo land. They are peace abide, law abiding people, peaceful people going their normal businesses. The people that are committing anomalous, anomalous atrocities or hostilities in Igbo land are the Nigerian military forces. Yes. They shoot. They shot in the past. They are still shooting presently. And the IPOB men are peaceful. They have not been using arms. Even as I'm talking to you now, United Nations has concluded after Operation Python dance that killed over 1,000 Igbo boys that have concluded that IPOB should be using arms for self-defense on a stage, world stage, like what is going on in Igbo land, one should need to do what? To put in order every mechanism to assure himself self-defense. So now their friends, the IPOBs, they are doing all it could, it could take to make sure that they defend themselves if anybody, if any forces from the government 
attack. Or from the bandits. Or Band the See, any forces from Hessmen, bandits, are you listening to me? Uh, Boko Haram from north attack Igbo man. I mean, the indigenous people of Biafra, the farmers, everybody in Igbo land, they should defend themselves. As I'm talking to you now, our security outfit is uh, uh, Eastern uh, Security Network. They are there protecting our forests. They are the forest guard we have. They are allowed. Why? Nigeria could not contain the spate of Fulani Hesmen terrorism across the west, across north, north central, southeastern Nigeria, and the southwestern Nigeria, which is why we are now relying on our eastern security network. IPOB don't use God. They are still agitating peacefully. The people in the bush that are manning our forests, securing our farmers from Fulani Hesmen attack are the ESN men. See, let me tell you, if anybody is bringing accusation against IPOB, it's based on speculation. Speculations that are coming from those South, South East, Eastern governors who are benefiting from their, from federal government of Nigeria, you know, uh, 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 policies. Because federal government of Nigeria, their policies is favoring the governors, favoring the ministers, the senators from upper house and lower house. And they have not seen the kind of hardship the people of that region is going through. Right now, as I'm talking to you. So anybody accusing IPOB to drop arm or to drop agitation, if you ask IPOB to drop agitation, you are what? Making a big mistake of your life. If you ask IPOB to drop guns or weapons, you are getting it wrong because they are not using what? IPOB don't agitate with guns. IPOB agitating with what? All possible... Uh, 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 structures available, made available in the West. Western Europe, America, Asia, Australia, Antarctica, and so on and so forth. Even in Africa, yeah, all of Africa countries. They are the agitated. They don't use weapon. Which weapon are you asking this people to drop? Have you caught anybody IPOB with weapon before? You caught people that are fighting Fulani you attack them, IPOB, kill them. The same people that are fighting Flani are the ones that are securing farmers in Igbo land. See, Nigerian military forces are the reason why there is hunger, hunger in the land now. Because when ESN, Eastern Security Network, are fighting killer headsmen in the bush, Nigerian military and police will come after them. Attack ESN, police will come and attack them. Why? You will not declare his men terrorists, but the United Nations has declared them terrorists. They are the number fourth in the world, deadliest terrorist organization. Igbo man is IPOB. The meaning of IPOB is what eludes your people because all your certificates are fake. You can come out and give me the definition of indigen. Indigenization. Indigen. Meaning land, the people, region. Indigenous people. People of that land, the land in question is Biafra land. It's not Fulani land. It's not Nigerian land. Everybody is fighting for his land. So what is it that brings this problem about detaining the Nan the Kanu? Nan the Kanu should be out by now. Nan the Kanu is there for nothing. He has not killed anybody. IPOB has never ever shot even one bullet. They have not shot even one bullet. It's Nigerian soldiers and police that are shooting IPOB members. So I don't know the reason why so much I know about drop uh, agitation, drop this and that. How, you, how could you tell somebody to drop, drop his rights? Agitation is right of every Nigerian. Any Nigerian could agitate for any nationality he likes. It depends on the effort, effort you put in place. Ibos have gone far on agitation of Biafra. Biafra that is more ancient than Nigeria will never ever be forgotten. That, rather, it is getting momentum. By day. Yeah. Day by day, Biafra yeah. is gathering popularity and momentum. So let me tell you, Biafra station is on course, and we can never beg anybody for referendum. Referendum is going to come according to international laws. 
That's it. We, we have other agitators in the in the northwest, in the north. We have the uh, the Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. They are also agitators. Yes. L let us talk about them dropping their arms and swing for peace. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that is for the world. The platform that is uniting the whole world together to advocate, address that issue. That issue is not for Igbo man like me to address. Because I know that the Boko Haram insurgents are doing so under Islamic ideology. They want to at least decolonize the Northeast, core North, and instill Islamic Emirates there. They have now combined with Al Qaeda and ISIS and come out with what they tagged or tag ISWAP. Their own ideology is quite different from what Biafra man is fighting for. They agitate for religious purposes. They want to convert that region of Nigeria to Islamic states. Myself, I am in my land, natural land, my ancestral land of Biafra. We are not agitating for religion. We have not killed anybody. We are, we are beginning to say that the, there is political imbalances in Nigeria. That Igbo man has been marginalized, oppressed, and exploited for 50-something years now. And nothing has been done about it. That is what we are trying to tell the whole world. That after the war, Nigeria and Biafra civil war, no family has been compensated or benefited from the government of Nigeria based on the damages done by that poor group. So this time around, we are coming to voice out to the world. Nigerian military forces started killing mama, papa, youth, children in Igbo land in that regard, which is, of course, internationally too wrong. It's a criminal act. So what I'm trying to say is that let nobody ever equate, compare, categorize what is happening in Igbo land with what is going on in the northeastern Nigeria. Northeastern Nigeria is Al-Qaeda fortress. Al-Qaeda, what? Fortress. Al-Qaeda. Yes, Al-Qaeda is the first group, followed by ISIS. Then now, ISWAP, because as a result of Boko Haram, merging together with Flanny Hessmen and Saru terrorists and ISIS. Now they form a particular platform called Islamic State of West African Province. That is ISWAP. Biafra ideology is different. Biafra ideology is older, taller, bigger than Nigeria. Biafra has been in existence during the time, for the time immemorial. We could not even put the accurate date here because I know that the first agitator for the emancipation of sovereigns of Biafra was not Nandekano. He was Hebo. Hebo is from Sierra Leone. Is an Igbo slave that was at least uh, 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 dropped in Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone, by slave raiders, or you call them slave masters. They migrated from Texas, USA, because during the slave trade, it was the Igbos that dominated the whole US, Igbo slaves. So they now came down and settled, at, uh, uh, settled in uh, Freetown, capital of uh, uh, Sierra Leone. And if they are he started agitating for emancipation of Igbo, Igbo nation called Biafra. It wasn't only Ojuku. It wasn't only James Biali. It wasn't only Rafael Wazirike or Nandekano. There were many, many in the past Biafra agitators, agitators that did their best to make sure that the first black Jewish state emancipates. So if anybody is just trying to crucify Nandekano or IPOB, that person should go to hospital, psychiatric hospital, and check his brain well. Why is it that we are we have not allowed history in our our university and other tertiary, tertiary institution of learning in our curriculum? It is because of history. The Flanny hegemonists they don't want Nigerians to be educated on history so that they will not know where they come from. Flanny actually know that we know that they migrated from. Senegal, Gambia, Futa Jelon Highland. That's where they come from. And mounted on the houses. Their leader, Ottoman Danfodio, 
orchestrated what was called then in history the conquest, Northern Conquest. It stretched across of the whole Northern region. Are you listening to me? They, 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 they campaign and campaign for their emirates to be at least uh, installed or mounted in the Midbelt and the, the Midbeltans under the paramount royal chief, the Atta of Egala, stopped Osman Danfodio from coming further in the southern Nigeria, which was why he was beheaded. I mean, Osman Danfodio by Atta of Egala, and he died today. That's why you can never see Islam crossed across Benue to Igbo land. But there's no excuse. Had even they actually did, Igbo warriors would have used them as pepper soup across Igbo land. They wouldn't have succeeded. We fought and fought Britain. Britain could not even imperialize us. We know how many years it took Britain to defeat the Igbo man. So that's why we did not have us get it in Igbo setup. Islamic ideology. It is so strange to our culture and tradition in Igbo land. We don't know Islam. What we know is Christianity. It's the Britain that brought it, but before they come in, we have strong ties with the Jews from where Christianity emanated from. Okay, thank, thank you so you much.